Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're painting some big skies in watercolour. It's a wet into wet tutorial. This was the image that I put up on the thumbnail, but as you'll see um, as we go through the video, I did do several skies um, quite similar using the same three colours. The colours I used were cobalt blue with Payne's grey and the introduction of a little bit of a red. It could be something like crimson alizarin. These colours really suit the colours of the sky that we have at the moment in the UK. Over here in Wales, we've got um, constant rain and these sort of stormy skies, so um, I think it's quite appropriate. I think if you want to use watercolour to its full potential, then you really do have to master these wet into wet washes. Um, no other medium really works like this, and um, I think it is really important. And People do find it difficult, but it's only down to practice, and so during this tutorial I've done several small pictures rather than labouring on one, and it's just the practice that's going to help you to overcome some of the difficulties, so I do hope you find it helpful. I'll also be talking a little bit about putting on the flat washers. Um, I use the flat washers in the foreground here for the distant mountains, and I think again that's um, something that people can have problems with so um, you might be interested in seeing how I worked out these um, these overlapping distant hills. Before I continue with the video I just want to apologise in advance that um, I'm down with a bit of a lurgy so my voice isn't at its best so um, I do apologise for that. I'm working on Bockingford not surface 140 pounds paper the area I'm painting is approximately 8 inches by 8 inches and the brush sizes I'm using, round brushes, 8, 10 and 12. For this painting I put a little bit of double sided tape um, underneath the paper but you'll see later that I find it better to, um, to put some tape over the corners. I'm wetting the paper thoroughly. There are different ways that uh, you know different artists will tackle this. Some people will actually soak the paper and wet the front and the back. The way I work them is I like to saturate the paper. I put a, a layer of water on with a big brush. I let it sink in a little bit and then I put some more water on. And before I put the paint on then I sort of tip it, have a look at it, make sure it's glistening everywhere so it's not drying but also making sure I haven't missed any bits as well. I'm pausing the video here just to say a little bit about the colours that I've mixed up. Um, the darker one on the left we've got the three colours that I mentioned which is cobalt with Payne's grey and then I mixed another colour sort of ready with a little bit of red in it it's really important to get all your colours mixed up before you even wet the paper and it's important to mix a lot, I can't stress that. I think you'll find on one of these, I think it might be this first one actually, I hadn't mixed up quite enough, I got a bit close to the wire there, but I do want to stress that you must mix up all your colours first and mix up a lot more than you think you're going to need. So I have the paper nice and wet. It's not wet enough so that the water is actually flowing down it, it's, uh, but you can see it is very wet. I'm using about a number 8 brush at this stage to put the first lot of clouds on. You can see they've got um, very nice soft edges. Later in the video I switched to a number 10 because I felt the bigger brush did a better job. So you need to experiment with your brushes as well as the concentration of the paint mixes that you're using as well. You can see the edges are nice and soft. The paint isn't running too much and when I'm putting on it's staying in place. For this particular sort of stormy sky, be careful not to put too much paint on. Leave lots of white spaces to stand for the clouds. Because it's wet, you can go back with some darker paint over the top, you can judge um, the tone that you want there. Generally I'd make the clouds at the top a bit darker. Again, while you're working you can see how the paint's running, so you I, you can see here I can, I've got my paper on a bit of board so I can move it around. You must be able to do this to tilt your painting as you're working. 
then you may want to let it dry flat. I tend to let it dry at a bit of an angle. You can see here, I'm just popping some tape underneath. And one of the main rules, don't fiddle around with it. Um, just let it do its own thing. You can see the difference here. This is that wash that I put on when it's dried back and softened. Watercolour will always dry back, so make your skies a little bit darker. If they're looking, if you don't think they're looking too good, don't worry about it, don't fiddle with them. Put them on one side, on a slight angle, and do another one. And you'd probably be quite surprised, actually, because um, they do dry quite differently. Pleasantly surprised, I hope. This was the second one that I did while that first one was drying. I'm working it in the same way. And um, what I found was, though, that this one was wetter. The I didn't. Uh, I must have put more water on the back, so it was quite a bit wetter, which was quite interesting. So the paint was going to run a little bit more, and you'll see how that works out. I think this one dried back quite nicely. It was, uh, it's a lovely soft sky, just crying out for a little bit of landscape in the foreground. This was quite a bit wetter than the first one, so um, it doesn't really matter. You can experiment and see how, just see how they work, and um, don't be too frightened of just letting go and having a play with the paints and the water. And this was another one I did. Um, I've speeded this up. This is uh, speed times two. I'm just talking a little bit about um, the tape holding the paper down. I'm finding that it is much better if you're working wet like this with the watercolour paper. This, this weight, 140 pounds, is to just put a little bit of masking tape in each corner rather than putting the masking tape all the way round. All my skies, when they were dry, they all dried quite flat. 
which was good. There wasn't an awful lot of cockling going on there, so um, I would recommend doing this. Ideally, you'd be working on a block, pre-stretched block or stretch paper, if you're working this way to more. Um, if you're working this way to watercolor, but um, you can do that. But I think sometimes you can get too precious. the The blocks are very expensive, and it takes a time to stretch the paper. It's um, it's just down to individuals and what they want to do. I find if I'm experimenting, trying to work things out like this, then I'd rather use the less expensive Bockingford and to cut it up to about this size. This seemed to work well, so um, hope that's helpful for you. And this was the, the way that this sky dried back, which again was nice and soft. So when the skies are totally dry then we can put a little bit of foreground on. Um, you can choose your own foreground. You might want to do um, trees or a little bit of a lake or something like that. I thought I'd just put some simple hills on receding into the distance. I've um, mixed up here. This is where I ran out of paint or nearly ran out of paint. It was this. I didn't mix up enough. Like for the skies, if you're going to be doing these flat washes, you do have to mix up enough paint. Um, I had a little bit of grease mark on the paper there as well. So I'm putting this um, this flat wash on and I'm bringing it all the way down to the bottom. So there's going to be three hills, but they've all got the first coat on. Now when that first wash is completely dry, then um, I'm going to put on the other layer that's going to be this sort of um, middle hill. And it's also going to cover the foreground hill as well. Um, if you put this on when the first hill is damp, you're going to run into all sorts of problems. I generally make double sure that everything is dry by using a hairdryer. You do have to have some patience in watercolour as well because uh, you can easily mess things up by going ahead too quickly. Now here is the hill in the foreground um, with a much stronger mix. I added um, a little bit of the red to this to, um, to bring it forward so uh, it's quite a dark foreground hill on this picture. I think it works okay. Again, you can make some slight little indents and sort of little hill shapes on the main outline just to make it more interesting, which is what I was doing there. And this was how this picture dried. Um, a word of warning for you, um, don't, when you're doing your hills, don't press on with the pencil lines because you do have to rub those out and um, it's not a major issue but what I found here was rubbing the pencil lines out I was also rubbing off some of the paint which um, explains the marks on that foreground hill there if you can see them. Again it's not a major issue it doesn't bother me particularly but um, it's worth noting that in fact, it'd be a good idea to try not to actually put any pencil marks on at all. But um, I do like guidelines, so um, from then on I was extra careful to make the marks very, very light. So here is a similar one that I did. I kept these hills lighter. As you can see, it's a much paler wash. Um, Putting on these flat washers, um, I do have a video, I'll put a link below on the best way to do them, which is whatever you do, don't put an outline, a strong outline over first. Use a, a broad brush stroke for your first strokes and try and keep that little bead of wet paint along the bottom there. Go back to your pool of colour all the time and that's really one of the best ways to, to put on a flat wash and whatever you do, don't go back into it. I've speeded the next two stages of this painting up a little bit. Um, 
you'll see at the end that uh, it is quite a lot lighter than the first one that I did. And this is the final painting of the hills, which uh, I think they look quite nice. I think it's um, it's easier to do the lighter, more watery washes as well. On this third painting, um, I did some hills, but this time I put them on and they were overlapping. And um, I think it's quite important. There's an important point that I wanted to illustrate here when you're doing these overlapping hills. The first lot of hills, um, the first wash goes on exactly the same. It's a wash covering all three of the range of hills there. And again, we, we want it to um, we want it to be completely dry. Now, the second range of hills, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm actually covering the second layer and the layer that's going to be at the very front. I'm covering both of those with the same wash. Now when it's dry it's looking like this and then to get the hill at the front then you're going to put on a third coating if you like, a third wash over that second one to bring the hill at the front. So you're not going to be painting these hills in a sort of painting by numbers way. You're going to be bringing these washers down to the bottom every time you put them on. And when you're painting in watercolour, this is the most effective way of doing this sort of landscape, if you like. So this is how the third one worked out. Um, I wasn't looking to do anything perfect, which is just as well, because we've got um, a few little marks in there, which we're not at all worried about. Also, um, the um, cobalt seemed to granulate a little bit with the Payne's Grey. Cobalt tends not to granulate, but I was finding some granulation here. If you're not keen on the granulation, then I would avoid ultramarine when you're doing these paintings. If you like granulation, then use ultramarine. I don't mind. I don't mind either way. Again, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope that you found some tips there to help you in your own watercolour paintings. If you do do some paintings based on this video, then do post them. I've got a Facebook group and there's a link in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, then as always, we say give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything in the future. Bye for now.